Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nicole and this is Devon Lee Design Studio and today we are going to be making a jar opener so let's get started. <laughs> Morning or good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel today as I said in the outro we are making a jar opener I'm sure you've seen these around in kitchen shops or your local target or somewhere like that these are brilliant I have had one for many many years in my kitchen they're just easy to grab you can twist open your jar without hurting your hand any um, and it, they're super simple to make now, I originally had one from Tupperware. We all remember the Tupperware. Don't see it around that much these days, but um, I got one as a hostess gift from uh, Tupperware many years ago, and it finally gave up the ghost. I thought, you know what? I need to make some of these, um, and I know that my daughters are going to need them when they move out home, so I'm going to make a couple of them. They are perfect for a scrap busting idea. These fabrics that you can see here, I've just pulled out of my scrap bin. Um, and they're perfect for a gift to put in, you know, a little gift basket or something like that. Take no time at all. All right. So the things that you're going to need today are your general sewing supplies, a rotary cutter, scissors, something to turn your project corners out, either a, um, this is a scrapbooking creaser or a chopstick. Um, I like to use this one because it has that little bit of a rounded corner and it doesn't poke through. You're also going to need some thread snips and also some wonder clips because it's a little bit difficult to put pins in. You're going to need a square ruler. So I am making mine a six and a half inch size today. I find that that is a really good size to, to use in my hand. And I, most of the ones that I've measured in kitchen shops and all the rest of it are around that size as well. So once you've got that, you'll also need a couple of pieces of fabric. I've just pulled some stuff left over from projects and whatnot you're also going to need some draw liner and i will leave a link down below where you can get some of that and because uh, i'm guessing that you're going to be making quite a number of these for your friends and also to help you out um a little bit of tissue paper is a really good if you don't have tissue paper you can use baking paper or parchment paper so you just need something to when we turn our project out you just need something to go on the bottom so it will go through your sewing machine okay um a teflon foot will also work um but I found that the tissue paper was the best because this is a little bit thick, whereas a Teflon foot works really well for vinyl. Um, so I ended up using, even though I've got a Teflon foot, I ended up using this because I found it easier to go through. All right, so all we need to do, um, and obviously you need a working sewing machine and thread to match your um, project, but all you need to do is basically take your uh, six and a half inch square and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, lay this right sides together. Okay. Um, I don't think there is a right or wrong side on this one. Um, but basically, you're just going to lay that down on the right side of the fabric. And we're going to get some wonder clips. And it doesn't matter if your little piece is a, um, a little bit bigger. You can always trim that off. Okay. But you want to get it as close as you can to lining up with the edge of the fabric and because mine has been in a roll <laughs> it's rolling curling up on me so I'm going to get one onto that corner now you want your bottom piece of fabric to be nice and crease free um, so that's why it's good to just leave it laying flat with your hand on it because this um, draw liner will bunch up that fabric if you're not careful okay, and we're just going to go around all the way And of course, I had black um, draw line here, but you can get draw liners in many different colours. Um, I've seen them in pinks, I've seen them in cream, white, black. Um, yeah, so, and that's just at local stop shops that I've got here. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to lay this right side down. And then we're just going to clip that into the place using the same clips, keeping everything nice and flat. So you can see that's nice and flat. And if we roll this one over, you can see that it, it's not as flat as it should be. So you just want to flip that over and just smooth it out. Sometimes it curls up, so it's better to check. Okay, so both of them are now nice and flat. Now what we need to do is make sure that we leave an opening. So where I've got these two um, wonder clips here, I'm going to start at this wonder clip with a needle in the down position, use a quarter inch seam allowance, and I'm going to go all the way around, and I'm going to stop at this orange one. Okay, 
So let's head over to the sewing machine and do that. Make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and at the end. And I like to have the needle in the down position. And then we're just going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. And we backstitch there. Stop quarter inch from the end, turn, and go all the way around until we get back to that first side. And you're going to backstitch there, but you want to leave about a uh, two inch opening. Okay, so we've come back around to our um, first side and I've still got that one to clip there. So I'm gonna turn for that final side and I'm gonna come down, but I wanna leave that opening there. So I'm gonna come down a little way. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a back stitch there. And then we can pull it out. So you can see there that we've got an opening grab our thread snips okay then we're just going to get our either our thread snips or our scissors and we're going to cut that corner off and we're just going to come in a little bit without going into our stitching just to take some of that bulk out of the corners okay you just want to be mindful that you don't go into your stitching. And you do that on all four corners. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to open up our opening, okay, and between one side of the fabric and our uh, draw liner, we're going to stick our finger in and grab a corner, and we're just going to poke that out, okay. And then we'll get our um, either our chopstick or what I'm using is a scrapbook creaser. And we'll just poke our corners out. Okay, now at this point you can give it a press, but make sure that you um, don't touch any of your um, draw liner because it will melt to the bottom of your iron and now I don't necessarily press it because I find I can just uh, finger press that and then we'll come over to here to this side and you can see our little side is gone in the the uh, raw edges have gone in okay and then I'm just going to put a couple of wonder clips on here just to hold that in place for just a moment and then I can roll these seams and get them to sit nice and flat before we top stitch it now when we top stitch we want to elongate our stitches I usually go to about a three and a half for my top stitching it makes it easier to go through all the bulk and it gives you a nicer finish it won't be so um, so when you look at some top stitches they look like they're a little bit jagged if you lengthen your stitch that will help with that okay all right so Let's get rid of all our long threads. Make sure that this is all tucked in. And we're going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance, okay, to stitch around the outside of this. So all my corners are, are pushed out. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of 
tissue paper and it is larger than what my piece is okay and now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to start in one corner and I'm going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance to top stitch all the way around and making sure that I get this closed here okay and I start a little way down from the corner um, that just gives me room to come back around and turn and I will have the needle in the down position but I will not back stitch until I get back around to where I started okay and just using an eighth of an inch seam allowance we're going to top stitch all the way around now when you get to your opening just make sure all your raw edges are tucked in and get that eighth of an inch including the um, draw liner make sure that's tucked in there nicely as well And then once you've passed your opening, you can go all the way around, stopping an eighth of an inch from the edge, and then pivoting, and we continue on. So you can see with the tissue paper, it makes it nice and easy to go through. You can use parchment paper. That is a little bit trickier to get it. Um, and you make sure that the dull side is down, not the shiny side. It can be a little bit trickier to remove, but it is very much doable. Okay, so we've come around to our final, we've done our final side and we're turned on our final corner and we'll just come down to where we started and then we'll do our back stitch. get our needle to come up and snip that out get rid of our long threads okay so we can move our sewing machine out of the way right now all right so we've still got this <laughs> tissue paper on and all you're going to do is you're going to start with the little bit that's sticking out against the edge of the fabric get rid of that And then you can start to pull the other off as well. It can be a little bit messy, but it just saves a lot of heartache um, trying to stitch through. Because it's a little bit thicker, the Teflon foot just didn't want to play the game. Um, so I found that the tissue paper is the easiest way to go. And as I said, you can use parchment paper, but tissue paper is just so much easier to remove from the stitching. Um, than what the parchment paper is but if you're in a pinch you can definitely use that just remember to have the dull side down against your sewing machine because that shiny side will grip a little bit and make it a little bit harder for you to do right. okay and then all I do is just I just get my um, scrapbooking boner to get those last bits out and they'll come away of it um, over time if there's little bits that you just can't get out but I just run that along and as you can see it's getting them all out and there you go that is a jar opener ready to use and that's super quick a nice quick scrap busting project um, I hope that you enjoyed this video today if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up down below um, also if you've not yet to um, subscribe to the channel maybe consider um, subscribing and if you're looking for extra content we also have our patreon I leave a card at the end of the video and also a link down below and you can come over and check that out but that's it for me today have a wonderful wonderful day everybody. Thank you very much for joining me again and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.